Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our contemporary worship will begin in a few moments. morning welcome to worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church wherever you find yourself in this moment whether you're worshiping here in person or on a screen on TV we are so glad to have you join us today the Holy Spirit has called us here in this time and place to worship together in worship we hear that God's love is not limited by anything so no matter where you're coming from today, we pray you can feel God's presence walking alongside you. As always, we have a lot going on here at Our Saviors, so here's a few announcements we want to highlight as we begin. First off, do you love baseball? You can, yeah, yeah! You can join Our Saviors for a trip to the Canaries game on July 29th. Tickets are available now. You can get them at the Welcome Center on Sundays or at the office during the weekdays. Tickets are going to be $12 per person, and for this one, you will be responsible for your own transportation to the game. Next, a reminder to join Pastor Randy and I for our continuing study on biblical lament. This is the study on Thursday evenings in the Friendship Room. It starts at 6 o'clock with refreshments, and then the hour of study begins at 6.30. And even if you haven't been able to make it to the, the last two sessions, you're always welcome to come. After the study, if you feel like maybe you want a stiff drink, have no worries. You are invited to join Pastor Randy for some good theological conversation and fellowship at Monk's Ale House. Mark your calendars and plan to attend Theology Tapped this Thursday from 8 to 9.30 p.m. Attention second through fifth graders. We'd love to have you guys join us for Mary and Martha, a children's musical which will be presented on July 17th at Our Saviors. Rehearsals will be July 11th through 14th from 5.30 to 6.30. You can contact Jean Lavasser for more information. Next, mark your calendars for the upcoming ministry site study. This will be conducted by a member of the Synod staff on Wednesday, July 6th at 6.30 p.m. The event is open to everyone who's interested in finding out more about the process of calling the next pastor of youth and family for here at Our Saviors. And another holiday weekend is approaching fast, but we want to let you know our worship schedule for the July 4th weekend is remaining unchanged. See you in church. And speaking of summer schedules, our summer blast was such a blast in June that we're hosting another one in July. You can join us Wednesday, July 13th from 5 to 7 for a time of food and fellowship, music by short notice, and even a dunk tank. Woo -hoo. Yes, I'm not as woohooing because I may or may not be sitting on that dunk tank seat. <laughs> and now, we are God's people created to create a world in the goodness of God's image. Greetings to you in the name of the one who creates anew every day, the one who forgives the repeat offender, the one who sanctifies again and again. Let's sing.
darkness hide I hope so bold I need a resurrection Gathered together as the body of Christ, we confess to God and to one another how our sins prevent us from following the Advocate's example. Let's pray. Holy God, you are a God of all peoples, yet because of sin we miss the mark and prioritize some people over others. Instead of helping to ignite the fire of your spirit, we rush to douse it out when it does not look like we expect. Because of fear, we scramble to provide quick fix solutions when you call us to do so much more. The advocate cares for those who are most in need, but we ignore the call to follow that example. Pursuing the ways of this world we find we do not truly know you the way you intended. We continue to forget the promises you have made to us. Though we are sinful and fall short, the Spirit advocates on our behalf. Therefore, dear siblings, let go of your shame and the light of God's unending grace shines upon you. God in Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, declares that you are forgiven and freed from the power of sin and death forever. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. I want the heart of Jesus. 
Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow the way of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, now it's that time where I invite the kids to come on up to Kid Talk Cove. Come on up, use the stairs if you would, please. Anybody who feels comfortable, come on up and take a seat on these lovely colored dots. So exciting. Of course, you don't have to come up, but it's way more fun if you do, of course. And you get a nice close look up here with all these pretty colored dots. Awesome. Hi, how are you guys today? Good morning. Come on over. Oh, so glad to see you guys all here today. What color are you going to pick? Ooh, purple. Good choice. Well, I have a picture of a tree, and I want you to try and guess what kind of a tree it is. Are you ready? Okay. What kind of tree is this? Do you know? An apple tree. Oh my goodness. You're really smart. You can tell this is an apple tree, but how do you know? What if I told you it's a mango tree? How do you know it's an apple tree? Yeah. Because there's apples on it. Oh, yeah, I guess that does kind of give it away that there's apples on the tree. Can you imagine if this wasn't an apple tree and it grew apples? That would be really weird, wouldn't it? Because apple trees make apples, and we know it's an apple tree because of the apples it grows. Well, guess what? Sometimes in the Bible, we get compared to plants like apple trees, only we're called to do a different kind of fruit. We grow some fruit too. What kind of fruit do you think people grow? Yeah. Uh, like fruits and stuff? Yeah, fruits and stuff. Yeah. What else? Hmm. Any other guesses? Yeah, all right. Oh, people can grow apple trees because they plant seeds from apples. That's a really good answer. Yeah. Well, we grow some fruit that's not the kind of fruit that we eat. It's called the fruit of the Spirit. So you might have heard of the Holy Spirit. We talked about the Holy Spirit quite a bit a few weeks ago at Pentecost. And today we're going to hear about all sorts of different kinds of fruit of the Spirit. Have you ever heard of that before? When I was, what's that? 
You've heard a song? Yeah, see, when I was a kid in Sunday school, we sang a song about it. Do you remember what some of the fruit of the Spirit are from that song? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't get mad at people. So one of the fruits of the Spirit is love, and another one is joy, and there's a whole bunch of them. So I have here, I actually have a bracelet that reminds me of all these fruits of the Spirit, and it goes like this. There's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's a lot of different fruits, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So unlike the apple tree, we can grow all kinds of fruit, but they all come from the Spirit, which is God, because God gives us ways to show people how much God loves us and how much God loves them. Just like the apple tree, you knew it was an apple because of its apples, right? People look at us and they can know that God loves us and God loves them because of the fruits that we show. When we show people love, when we show people joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. There's nine different fruits of the Spirit. My goodness, that's a lot. Yeah, so we got to remember all these, but we don't always have to memorize them. We can remember them because that's what we show. When we show love to people, what are some ways we can show that fruit? Yeah. Um, giving Giving people hugs. That's a great one. How can we show joy? Yeah. Cheering people on, that's a good one, yeah. How about patience? Ooh, that's a hard one, yeah. Patience is waiting in line and not, and not like, pushing. Yeah, waiting in line and not pushing and just waiting your turn. Good job. And we have all these fruits of the Spirit, and these are the fruits that we show. So let's say a prayer. I'm going to say a line, and you guys say it back, okay? You ready? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for today. Thank you for today. Thank you for giving us. Thank you for giving us the fruits of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit. We love you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up today, guys. If you want to go over by the offering, we're going to do noisy offering in just a minute. I'm going to say some words first, and then we'll get to the noisy offering. So you can wait right over there. And I'll say some words, and then we'll start our noisy offering. I'll give you guys a signal, okay? That way you don't have to go all the way back to your seats just to come back again. God has blessed us with many gifts. God's Spirit rests upon us, and with thanksgiving, we present now our offerings. God can accept anything as an offering of praise. Our prayers, our burdens, our moments of joy our financial gifts, even our very selves, we bring these offerings today. Trusting that God uses all we bring to serve the whole world with the good news of Jesus Christ, we receive our offering.
thanks for our offering. God, we return these gifts to you as a harvest of your love and faithfulness. Like the farmer turning over the soil with each new season, you prepare salvation in your consistent, wonderful way. Like the parent preparing the house to face another day, you prepare salvation in your consistent, wonderful way. Like musicians singing hymns as your people set the table, you prepare salvation in your consistent, wonderful way. Use the gifts we have brought today for your good works and to your glory. Amen. We hear God's voice in the Bible and in preaching, in music, and prayer. Listen for God's voice in these readings. The first is found in Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, siblings. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, fractions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I have warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the reign of God. By contrast, the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Word of life, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. To honor the risen Christ in our midst, we stand for this reading from the Gospel of Luke. 
When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent his messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to that person, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Humanity has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But that person said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the reign of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the reign of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Janice. Yes, you may be seated. Good morning, everyone. And good morning to you who are joining us on television or Facebook. It's good to be together for worship. Grace to you and peace from God Almighty and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. In this country, we revere independence. Land of the free, home of the brave, we sing. The grand American experiment is rooted in the idea that all are created equal and endowed by their creator with the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But before we are Americans, we are children of God. Sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ, we say. Yet as foundational as this is for us who seek to follow Jesus, it is an immense task for almost all of us probably to keep this order aligned appropriately. So much in our world clamors for our allegiance that we often lose sight of our primary identity as people claimed and loved by God. Well, thank goodness for Paul, though, and his letter to the church in Galatia. The great apostle helps us regain our focus and our sense of purpose. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Oh, to us who revere our freedom, this is music to our ears, right? But the thing about the freedom that Jesus gives is that freedom from is always freedom for. Using the language of enslavement, Paul proclaims the good news that Jesus sets us free from the sin that binds us. And he describes this bound life as life in the flesh. It's not that he thinks this fleshly life is inherently flawed. It is, after all, a result of God's loving activity in creation. The problem is that the natural desires that we have as human beings can become disordered, out of whack, unhealthy, even destructive. Often, we want the wrong things, or we want the good things in the wrong way. <laughs> too much or too little, usually. For instance, the desire for intimacy can lead to sex without boundaries. The desire for an experience of the divine can sometimes lead to the worship of idols of our own making. And the desire for joy can lead to pursuing a good time, regardless of what the consequences might be. Our desires, natural as they are, can become disordered. And Paul would say that disordered desires enslave us. They enslave us to our passions, and they destroy 
community. To say it differently, when the way we live our lives is focused inward, when we think of human freedom as unrestrained permission to do whatever we want because of our inalienable rights, we live a bound life, not a free life. A bound life that ultimately denies our primary identity as children of God and contributes to the brokenness of our world. Unfortunately, we in the church are not immune to this human vulnerability. A couple of weeks ago at a Christian family camp at a church in Colorado Springs, a U.S. congresswoman from Colorado who is widely known for being an outspoken gun rights activist was the featured speaker. Now, I understand that the debate around the issues related to the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution is hotly contested. The example I'm going to share with you, however, is not intended in any way to tell you which side of the debate you should support. I want to make that clear. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Okay. Instead, the example I will share is an example of how our human desires, when they become self-centered and disordered, can lead us into a life that is actually opposed to the life of the Spirit, the life Paul would contend, God intends for all of us. So, let's take a collective deep breath and consider this example through the eyes of our faith and our identity as God's beloved. In her presentation, the congresswoman referenced the so-called trolls of Twitter who, for some reason, try to engage her online, almost never a good idea, regarding her views of the Second Amendment. She cited an example of one of the many questions she is asked, and it was this. How many AR-15s did Jesus have? Her reply, which she shared with the gathered church crowd, was, quote, he didn't have enough to keep his government from killing him. In the recording of this presentation, you can actually hear some in the crowd laughing at her comment. Now, regardless of where you land on the rights afforded us in the Second Amendment, we need to recognize in her remarks a theology of God and guns that obscures the message of Jesus, the one who came to this earth as the Prince of Peace. When his own disciples drew his sword in the Garden of Gethsemane in an attempt to defend Jesus, Jesus rebuked him, told him to put his sword away, and said, all who take the sword will perish by the sword. James Atwood warns that this conflation, this melding together of God and guns, is becoming an idolatrous religious framework that is contrary to the teachings of Jesus, and which some in the church are using to justify their position on Second Amendment rights. This example illustrates Paul's point about life in the flesh. When we allow our desires to turn inward in self-indulgent ways, the resulting disorder binds us to our sin, and we become enemies of God and impediments to the kind of community that Jesus envisioned when he proclaimed the kingdom of God. 
Now, some may argue that we shouldn't be talking about stuff like this in church because it's too, too political. I fully understand that these conversations are uncomfortable and that decisions about things like gun rights or abortion or same-sex marriage or civil rights or you pick it, there are so many others, those decisions will be made by the leaders that we elect to serve our communities. But how we view each of these issues and how we lobby our elected officials must be firmly rooted, first and foremost, in our identity as children of God. Siblings, one to another, who have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And the freedom that we enjoy as children of God is both a freedom from our self-indulgent sin that binds us and a freedom for loving and serving our neighbor. In fact, the freedom that is ours in Christ precisely because it is a freedom for loving our neighbor actually binds us to one another in a relationship of mutuality and respect and love and calls us to act each and every day, not in our own self-interests, but in the interests, the best interests of our neighbors. This is life in the Spirit, Paul would say. A life marked by love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Remember, Jesus wanted his followers, that includes us, to live as a new community built on the practices of the kingdom of God, which John Dominic Crossan describes as a share community built from the bottom up as a positive alternative to the Roman greed community established from the top down. Our call to freedom, my fellow followers of Jesus, is a call to be this alternative community in our world a table of friends who form a new body of kinship free from the shackles of class and gender and race and ethnicity, an authentic community freed to embody Christ's presence and draw all, all of creation toward God's preferred future of wholeness and thanksgiving and joy. For freedom, Christ has set us free. But the thing about the freedom Jesus gives is that freedom from is always freedom for. So, as we revere and even celebrate our independence as citizens of this country, may our freedom in Christ compel us to love like Jesus loves in our homes, in our schools, our workplaces, our communities, even, even in the public square. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah.
Together with the whole church, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, creation, and all in need. Faithful God, set the face of your church firmly on you. Rooted in your self-giving love, may the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. Give us the courage to continue showing love to everyone we meet, boldly proclaiming your promise of unconditional love for all. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gentle God, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. Comfort the citizens of Afghanistan as they recover from the earthquake that happened earlier this week. Bring healing to your lands. God of grace, hear our prayer. Righteous God, guide all who govern that they may place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love that they may create legislation that protects your creation. Protect all who live under tyranny and conflict and attend to those who are most in need of your presence. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God, send your spirit of discernment to the governing board, the writing teams, and the call committee here at Our Saviors. Help them all remain firmly rooted in you as they continue to live our mission of connecting faith to everyday life. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for giving us such a beautiful and diverse cloud of witnesses. Help us to remember we are all created in your image so that we may continue to celebrate the variety of gifts you have given us. Wrap your arms around those who feel unable to express their true selves. Help us offer a loving embrace like you do so that all who feel lost 
afraid, lonely, or hurt may find solace and rest in your eternal promise of love. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Healing God, we give you thanks that you are always present in our lives. Reveal your healing presence to all who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, especially Oliver Laughlin, Arden Barlow, and David Johnson. Uphold all those who grieve, especially Ann Larson and family, as they grieve the death of her husband, Daniel, and the family and friends of Doris Sunby, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of every time and place, we know that you hear our prayers. So in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and all those prayers of our hearts to you. Amen. Amen. The promised advocate lives among us, dear friends, and reminds us of God's promises. We can see the advocate when we find common ground, common ground with those who feel distant from us. We can witness the advocate when we learn to love and forgive those who have turned away from us. We know this is the presence of God because this is how God promised to be with us on the very night Jesus was betrayed. It was then that he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, then gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, then gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. They remembered and shared so that we might do the same. They broke bread and they prayed so we too might pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Holy Spirit, pour out your blessings on these gifts that we bring before you. Here is the cup filled to the brim with the fullness of God's love. And here is the bread shaped by the nourishing substance of God's goodness. And here are the people given the name of God's new creation for this new generation. And God's people said, amen. amen. My dear siblings, the meal is ready. The Holy Spirit is here, welcoming all of us to the table. So come, come as you are, and receive the blessing of Christ's eternal presence. I will. Start on the outside, the outside looking in. This is where grace begins. Good morning. I'm Denny Gale, Celebrate Worship Coordinator here at Our Saviors, and we are so glad that you joined us today. We feel God's presence in this place, and we pray that the words and music from our worship service transmits that aura to you through the marvels of modern communication. Although we're separated by distance, we hope you'll think of our saviors as your church. Regardless of whether you're a member, let us know how we can serve you. Just call the church office to speak to a pastor, to request prayer, or get your name on our visitation list. Our website and Facebook page will give you deep insight into our ministry and the many ways that you can be part of it. Also, we hope you will prayerfully consider becoming a sustaining partner in this ministry that we share. God has called this church to proclaim Christ to a broken world and nurture faith that connects to everyday life. If you're drawn to this mission 
and can see its impact in your life, consider making a gift to our saviors to help sustain this work that God has given us to do together. You can give securely online at oslchurch.com forward slash giving or by texting the word sharing to 73256. Thanks again for joining us today. May the love of the risen Christ surround you this week. Pray with me the words you see on the screen. Thank you, God, for this incredible gift of love. Now that you have filled us with your Son's body and blood, fill us also with your Spirit, that we may be empowered to love the world like you do. Amen. Now as you go on your way, receive this blessing. May God bless you with hearts aflame. May Jesus Christ provoke in you a peace that goes beyond understanding, and may the Holy Spirit fill you with conviction to share good news with all the world. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. You're the only answer to the darkness. You're the only right among the wrong. You're the only hope among the chaos. You are the voice that calls me on. Louder than every night, I show in every fight. The truth will chase away. i
Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.